Okay, for this video, I'm going to go over just how to get a quick layout going for your magazine spread. The first thing you want to do is revisit the checklist that you need <clears throat> for the project. So it says you should have headline, deck, byline, lead, pull quote, story with columns, folio, end mark, or symbol. It includes it at minimal one main image and at least one secondary image, photo credits, Layout must include a subsection sidebar that includes a uh, infographic, chart, or statistic. Graphic may not be skewed, stretch, or difficult to read. Appropriate use of color built from um, graphics. And the text wrap tool has been used. I'm not going to do every single one of these, but I definitely want to go over the first eight. For this, I found a pre-written article online, and uh, you, you'll do the same. You'll just need to put the APA uh, citation here at the bottom, not just the URL, the actual citation you'll put in the slug. So to get this started, I want to continue off of the cover that we did in the last video on the Billie Eilish, um, on the Billie Eilish Best New Artist of the Year. Um, and I found an article that relates to that. And you're probably wondering where am I going to put my client, but depending on who your client is, you'll make your, your spread somewhat about it. Um, about your client, or you can make your sidebar about your client, or you can put a um, sometime, some type of statistic about something that's related. So on your spread, your client should be mentioned, but the whole spread doesn't have to be about your client. So I hope that clarifies some things. Um, so what you'll want to do is first start out making a layout. So I found a pretty cool photo. Um, of Billie Eilish and depending on how much room my article takes will depend on how much room I have for photos. Um, you can always shorten the article that you find. It's totally fine. Um, but I found one that I can actually overlap the title. So with this, with the magazine spread, you can actually have the photo stretch across your <clears throat> your fold line. You just want to make sure that there aren't any eyeballs or anything like that that will uh, be skewed from from doing this. And you can always use your frame to shrink the space that it takes. Um, to fit more room for your content. So I'm going to put the lead paragraph here with my drop cap and the deck will will come here underneath the title and then that saves all of this space for the rest of my article. So just getting, I actually put everything into a Word document. The um, I've got the URL so I can make the citation later. I've got the title, the byline, the deck, the lead paragraph, and the rest of the article. So I can actually just copy and paste all of this and start my spread from there. It will make it a lot easier um, to make, the, make your text thread. But first I'm going to start with my title. And this I'm just going to make a really big, bold, sans serif font. And I'm going to put my byline here, which is not going to be you. It's going to be whoever wrote the article. Make a new text box. I'm going to make it in the same font. So 
So to zoom in, I just did Command Plus. You can go to View and do uh, go the shortcut. I mean, go the long way. So there's the shortcut Command Equals or Command Minus. Um, depending on if you have a PC or a Mac, it'll be slightly different. And I'm also going to put the deck right here. And the deck is just kind of like a, a summary of what's to come in the article. Um, whereas the lead paragraph is like your, you know, the starting paragraph of your, of your article. If I can get my right screen up, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Here we go. I'm going to paste. And this is the deck that actually came with the article. If yours doesn't have one, uh, if the article that you find doesn't have one, you can just make one up. And find a font that you like um, that will match the rest of your article. So I'm going to do Sarah for this, since I did Sans Sarah for my, um, for my title. And the deck can also be larger font than your body copy, which should be 10 to 12 points. I'm going to zoom out again. And this is where I will po paste the rest of my article. And then I can add more design elements from there or take away from the article if it's just too long. So um, you may remember, or hopefully you remember, how to do a, sp a thread at this point. So I'm posting, I'm pasting the article in just one paragraph, and I'm going to hit this little plus sign to thread it through the rest of my pages, my columns. And then you would go through there and edit the spacing and make sure, you know, whatever needs to be bolded is bolded and all of that, because it didn't, <clears throat> it didn't include the... Uh, paragraph spacing like it's supposed to. And this is getting pretty long, so if it gets to the point where it's taking up your entire thing, find a stopping point and put your end mark there so you can actually finish the assignments um, requirements for the sidebar and <clears throat> statistics and that kind of thing. But just to get a draft going here, um, I can Double click in here, I'm going to put my drop cap on this area. So I'm going to go to uh, character and increase my drop cap. Well, am I doing the wrong one? Yep, <laughs> sorry. It's under paragraph. Here we go. And I don't want to do the whole thing. Sorry. I just want to do the first paragraph. So I'm going to highlight just this first part and increase from there. You only need one drop cap for your article. Um, I'm going to just pretend that it stops at this point so I can put my sidebar over here. Um, you don't want to leave your article like this. You definitely want to go through here and add spacing through the paragraphs and also bold the questions because these are all interview questions. So going through here and you know designing it like it should be. Um, you don't want to just leave it like this. You can also, um, if you want to highlight these kind of questions, if you do an interview, there is a thing under your paragraph tools where you can do shading. And you can choose a color. So if you want your text to be highlighted, you do that this way. So I'm just choosing another color so you can see it a, bit, a little bit better. Um, you could grab from this green and repeat the green. That would actually be pretty good. <clears throat> I'm going to add that to swatches. So then I can go in. Whoops. I can go in and shade with the green to match that if you wanted to do something like that. 
Um, again, you would go through here, just finish the formatting. You could add another photo because you do need to have at least two photos on your spread. Uh, I'm going to add another a photo that I already photoshopped the background out of. And turn on my text wrap. And I'm going to zoom in and use my pen tool to adjust that text, text wrap. Pen tool. Add some points around there so it'll wrap around her face. And then use my direct selection to grab those points and move them around her. And then as far as your sidebar is concerned, you can find some stats, maybe like something that's related to her. You could put um, like a green box over here and you could put maybe, you know, statistics like how old she is, um, what she's worth, how many albums she's put out, how many awards that she's won. But you could do it, you could increase um, like some num the size of the numbers and maybe have, you know, um, I'm just going to make it up, but say you have, let's say, uh, sold over 6 million in the U.S. So you could have um, some kind of statistic like this, and you could make all of these like different fonts. You could, you could make them decorative, um, you know, make it look like a magazine. So you could... Just have some stats um, going down, going down the line. You could have um, additional photos. Um, there's a lot you can do with sidebars. If you want to find an infograph to actually like use as a photo, that's okay too. The problem is a lot of infographs are made for poster size. So by the time you paste it in here, the font size will be absolutely teeny tiny and hard to read. So make sure if you do find an image that it is uh, legible when you put it in your magazine and it's not a tiny thing. So here's a, just an example on how you could get this um, sidebar started. And then you could have little symbols going down for her age and maybe awards or whatever kind of statistics that you want to put in here and um, you know and then you just add from there the one thing you want to make sure that you include is a folio and to do a folio you could just do an easy line at the bottom and you put the page number on the inside so I'm going to zoom in I like to do it right at the margin line and send it all the way back so it doesn't interfere with your text and you would put your page number so you go to uh, type insert special character markers and current page number or you could just type the number if you want and then you would put the magazine name off to the side Rolling Stone, uh, Spring 2020. And if you want to copy this onto the other side, you would just, whoops, let's expand that a little bit. You would just copy this and go over here and paste. Then you would edit <clears throat> so you can see it above her photo. So arrange. Uh, this one needs to ignore the text wrap, so you'd go to type. <clears throat> um, no, object. Text frame options. Ignore text wrap. Okay. 
and I'm going to turn that white so I can see it. And I'm going to move these two over to the margin line. Also need to tell that one to ignore text wrap. So object text frame options, ignore text wrap, OK. And I'm going to make that put on the right. If you want to do an end mark, I'm going to, let's just act like it, it finishes here. Whoops. Delete all that stuff. Okay. Um, if you want to do an end mark, a good thing for that is wingdings or webdings. So I'm just going to put a random symbol here and choose a webding. Um, you can do different numbers. You can try to see, you know, what other things they have. So I'm just typing in random letters here. Um, but you just want to have an end mark there to show that it's the finish of the of the um, article. <clears throat> and I think I've included everything from the list. So we've got story, story. Make sure you put your APA citation in the slug. I've got the folio, which is the page number. I've got the end marker symbol. I've got my lead paragraph with my drop cap. I don't have a a pull quote, um, but I do have all of these other things. If you wanted to add a pull quote. You would just choose some part of the article. Let's say I'm just let's say this is the pull quote, and you could just make a a text box that's separate, um, and put it in this space. So I'm gonna do just a regular white box, so you can you can't see it. And I'm going to turn text wrap on that box. So it moves everything down. And then I'm going to put a te text inside that box. And make sure that I turn, turn it to where it's ignoring the text wrap. Okay, it's a big responsibility, but the fans are the reason that you're anywhere, pretty much. All right, we'll just use that. Pretty much, and actually have my back most of the time. Okay, so we're going to copy that part. And this is where you would design this to be, you know, like a standalone quote. And you could put it in a fun font, bigger font, maybe centered, maybe also green to pull in the green from the picture. And then also you can add <clears throat> um, actual quotation marks and make them really big. And ignore the text wrap again. So you go to object, text frame options, ignore text wrap, OK. And I'm going to send it backwards. I'm going to copy it, turn it around, and add it to the end. All right, so this is a good enough draft for me to edit from there. Um, you know, of course, adding all of these, making them bold, and all that stuff. So you still have a long way to go, but it at least gives you everything that you need for the assignment.